watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. It's important. We just got to make sure we play away in basketball. We can't uh, can't underestimate teams. We're, we're really moving the ball well on offense and letting it flow. You have to give everything you got. Uh, it's very important for us to go 2-0 uh, in the conference. One thing about our players, we're not going to give up, and I think that's the definition of defense. We know when's going to be a tough team to beat. We can get a good line on Friday. Every SAC game is matter. I think we learned last year that nothing's guaranteed, right? Focus on what we can do today, win the day, and do the best we can, and that's all we can do. Uh, along those lines, if the year 2020 has taught us anything, it's taught us that the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. Tonight, supposed to be the first night of SAC girls and boys doubleheaders, right? But thanks to COVID cancellations, three of those five doubleheaders turned into single games. That the case at Kilmer Court as Car uh, Colton Howard joins us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Colton. Yeah, Glenn, only one game tonight at Snyder, but let me tell you, it was an important one. Last year's Wayne's win over the Panthers, helping to shape the SAC title race. Now, Snyder eventually won a share of that conference crown, but shared it with Carroll and Lures in part thanks to that early loss to the Generals. Would it be repeats or redemption? Wayne at Snyder, it's your highlight zone. Game of the week. Something would have to give tonight. Snyder, the highest scoring offense in the SAC. Wayne, the second best defense in the SAC. First quarter, the three balls coming early. Javon Lewis swings it over to senior Jannard Freeman, and he buries it from deep. Wayne on top early, 17 to 12. Still in the first on the fast break, Aiden Lambert shots no good, but look at this pure muscle from Elijah Davis. Gets the steal and the putback as quarter number one comes to a close. The Panthers have a two-point lead. That takes us to the second quarter. Time winding down, Snyder down one. Carson Jenkins hits a shot at the buzzer. Gives the Panthers the lead by one heading into the half. Now to the third quarter. Deshaun Hargrove shot, no good, but Christian Flanagan is there for the second chance points. That basket's good for a general lead. Later in the quarter, good ball movement from the Panthers. Lambert with too much empty space around him. He lets the three fly and connects. Snyder starting to grow his lead now ahead by nine. More Snyder offense. Lambert saves the ball from going out of bounds. He finds his buddy Grant Brown, who cleans it up from the top of the key. Brown flushes it down. But the junior, Carson Jenkins, had a night, ladies and gentlemen. The Snyder junior hits 30 points on this three. He finishes with 32. That's a game high. And the Snyder Panthers roar 80 to 65. I'm happy about our first SAC win. It's a big win for us. You know, we're, we came off a loss to Leo, so did they. So we just wanted to outbattle them, out rebound them, and come out with the win, which we did. We played tougher, and so we were focusing on all week. We're proud of how the guys responded. Um, you know, obviously Leo's a good team, and we and we took a lot of things that we got to get better at. And and our mantra has always been one percent better every day. And uh, I thought our defense was a lot better. The score may not may or may not indicate that, but I thought our defense was a lot better. Um, and and credit Wayne, they play so hard, and, they, and it's they're hard to keep in front of, but uh, absolutely proud of our effort, and I thought it was a very, very good conference win. Next up, Snyder is off until next Friday when they host Northside, while Wayne faces 4A number 10 Westfield tomorrow. Glenn, back to you. Put it down. Carson Jenkins, the breakout star of the Highlight Zone this season. Hey, sticking with the SAC Homestead. Hey, what a start for these guys. Spartans going from unranked to third in the 4A state poll. Spartans hosting a Dwenger team actually playing its first game, first game of the season. First quarter, who? Andrew Lieber slamming it home right down a Boyd Center. That was a good feed from Luke Goody, and then Goody, he can score it as well. The future member of the Illini basketball program had the bucket there. He had 14. Xavier Nolan with the pilfer and the pair. Two of Nolan's 11. That would lead the Saints. But at the end of the first quarter, Caleb Colpeen beats the buzzer. And after one, it was 24 to 6 Spartans. Yeah, Fletcher Lawyer, he gets the bucket here. He had 23 points. That would lead the Spartans. That was in the second quarter. Then it's Bo Jackway going the other way. And Grant Simmons left open in the corner. He drills the three for Homestead as the Spartans win this one over the Saints, 81 to 55. Carroll, part of that three-way tie for the conference title last season that Colton was talking about. Charges at the cage to face Concordia. Third quarter action. Joe Tappen just tap, 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 tap a room. He nails the three. Coach Brockman liking what he sees. Wouldn't like this. Watch Jalen Jackson. Keep your eye on Jalen Jackson. 
just getting all kinds of fancy. A little scoop de doo right there. He had 26 points and nine boards did Jackson. 38 24. Carroll. Ryan Preston, an easy two. He had 10. Carroll up by 16. Again, that's in the third quarter. Joe Tapp. We've already mentioned his name. He goes to the rack hard, gets the and one there. Then it's David Speckhart. It's the cadets make a run. Speckhart had 12 points to lead Concordia tonight. It's a 12-point game there, but Jackson simply too much as Marty Beasley's team goes into the cage and gets a win. 65, 40, 66, excuse me, 45. At Northside, the Riker Hay Memorial Trophy on the line tonight. We're talking the Legends hosting longtime rival Southside. The Archers looking good here. It's Austin Jordan. I'm telling you, it's good to see this kid healthy and playing some ball. He had 22 points to lead the Archers. Then Keith King and King says, King me. That's a beautiful three. And Southside up by four in the early going. However, the Legends got some young firepower. This is Bronte Johnson. He's probably the best freshman on the football field this year in the SAC. He can hoop as well. You saw him get the bucket. And then Brayshawn Bassett, only a sophomore. Feels like he's been around for a while, though. He gets the bucket as Northside beats rival Southside. 64-58, Legends on top of the Archers. After rescheduling their first six games, Heritage with its season opener. Patriots hosting their neighbor to the south, the Belmont Braves. First quarter action, Isaiah Wellman and Oh, they were getting the ball happy as they were tossing it around. Good ball movement in Wellman. Yeah, gets the shooter's touch, but Belmont down two in the first. Golden Wasson with a splash for Heritage as the Patriots led 14-11. Then it's Nick Ellsworth at 6-5. Showing off some nimble tootsies. The senior, the spin and in. Second quarter, Luke Saylor burst onto the scene last year as a freshman. Look how deep he hits it as a sophomore. It was off class. Uh, plus two for Heritage as they led by there. Three, three, but uh, Niles Kanapke, the 400th Kanapke to ever make the highlight zone, he lays it in. However, it's Belmont over Heritage in this one. Good one, 52 to 48. Down at the Stardome in Bern, South Adams getting a late start on a hoops, and you know that's what happens when your football team goes to state. They were taking on Busco. A little behind the back from Luke McClure to Jackson Paul for the three. Paul had 22 on the game. Busco starts out on a 15 zip run. South Adams, Trey Shock saw him a bunch during the football season. That's the first basket of the year for South Adams. Then it's Luke McClure to Drew Pliet. That kid's only a freshman. It's a 20-2 Busco lead to start this game. Second quarter, Drew Stutzman kicking it to Shock for the three and the foul. But simply too much Busco and too much Landon Jordan. The big guy had 27 points and 16 boards as Busco beats a shorthanded South Adams team 79 to 45. Northeast Corner Conference after a great run leading to Angola girls program. Brandon Appleton on the boys side now. Angola hosting conference rival Garrett. First quarter action is Brian, uh, Brian Parrish with the steal and the layup and the Hornets up 6-0 to zero. then. Take a look at this. You got Dylan Overland for Coach Appleton. Dylan Overland with the steal and Dylan Overland Howling at home. You gotta love it if you're a Hornets fan. 19 to 0. Angola jumps out to an early lead. Garrett, Kyle Smith, he's been their go-to guy early in the season. Gets the bucket to stop the run, but Angola started this game on a 20 to nothing run. Later, Oberlin. You're gonna see him with a stick back here for the Hornets as Angola wins an NECC game against Garrett. 68 to 40. Hornets on top. Final stop for boys tonight, we got Fremont. They won its NECC opener Tuesday night against Garrett. Lakeland with its conference opener in this one. And we pick it up in the second quarter. That's Logan Brace with the hoop and the foul for Fremont. Getting fancy there, but Lakeland led in the second quarter 22 to 14. Lakeland, the guys in those baby blues know how to play some hoop. Ben Kyle. A little floater right there, and it's a 10-point lead for the Lakers, 24 to 14. Then it's Kyle working the glass, and Lakeland puts another two on the board, 28 to 20. Lakers in the lead. A lot of guys can score the basketball for the Lakeland Lakers, and that would include Braden Bontrager. You're going to see Bontrager a little face-up game action here as Lakeland goes to Fremont and earns a win, 63-55. Your fun. Well, we have made a dent with the Jets.
But coming up after the break, it is the ladies' turn to take over the highlight zone tonight. Down in Ossian, they've got state title aspirations. But how would second-ranked Norwell fare against a hot Columbia City squad? We've got the answer in the SAC. Southside trying to stay perfect while Homestead looking to bounce back after losing last Friday. And new coach, same winning ways at West Noble. The Chargers hit the road, and so does the Highlight Zone. All that and more coming up next. We're the Heritage Patriots. Stay tuned for more on the Highlight Zone. Let's go! Well, those good folks at the castle and Ossian have felt like kings and queens so far this season, and, and rightly so. Norwell's girls' team is looking like regional royalty in Northeast Indiana as the Knights coming in 5-0, and ranked second in this week's 3A state poll. Norwell with its Northeast State Conference opener as the Knights hosting a Columbia City team that had won four of its last five. So they came in hot third quarter. Rebecca Marshall says, I can shoot the basketball. It's a bucket for Columbia City. 35-24, though, Norwell in the lead by 11. Later, Lauren Bales out and running. Why not? She's going to run across country at Purdue. You know she can run for days. Norwell up by 15. Then it's Maya Sheldon. Little fake there and in. Norwell up by 17 in the third. Well, let's fast forward to the fourth. Anna Schrader. For Coach Shearer's team with a little stop and pop there. But Kaylee Felling with a steal and lay in for Coach Thornton's squad. And Norwell earns a key NE8 victory 52 35 over Columbia City. My day tonight's game was pretty intense. I think that right from the get go, we just played with high intensity and played as hard as we could. It started on defense and it just translated into offense. The Columbia City. Uh, Played a great game a year ago and and, and deserved to win. Um, you know that that uh, that cost us uh, the outright championship in the conference, and so there was a little extra motivation. Um, but we certainly have a lot of respect for Columbia City, and uh, we feel good about getting a good win tonight. Let us stay in the Northeast State, shall we? East Noble at Belmont. The squad's coming in with a sterling six and one record. Kayla Heckman with the bucket right there. That was for Belmont, but East Noble firing back. Carly Turner knocks it down. It's an 8-3 ball game. How about Bree Walmsley with a bucket there for East Noble. Belmont, this one's really back and forth all night long. Morgan Schifferly doing it for the Squaws. And then you're going to see Belmont's Ellen Scott bury the triple as Belmont beats visiting East Noble 50-40 to Squaws overnight. At Armstrong Arena, New Haven coming off a win over Northside on Tuesday night. The Bulldogs trying to keep it up against visiting Huntington North. First quarter action, Leah Campbell. Campbell is mm -mm good with the steal and the layup. And the Vikings up by three in the early going. Then Meg Camomile with a layup here. The assist goes to Chloe Kaufman and Huntington North extends its lead to 7-2. Second quarter action of Arcy Nard. The talented New Haven star with the bucket and one cuts it to one. But Addison Dennis with the deuce there as Huntington North wins at Armstrong Arena by 10, 46 to 36. Let's go to the SAC. Homestead looking to get back on track. The 4A number 15 Spartans hosting Bishop Dwenger. Here we go in the third. It's Allison Stevens with a three. Stevens had 22 points on the game as Homestead led by 15. 47-32. Dwenger, Lexi Linder for a pair. It was an easy, but it goes. And then the three balls start falling for everybody. Maggie Kinsley for three. That's for Homestead. Then Dwenger coming the other way. Mackenzie Sokol for three. How about Molly Stock the other way? It's a three. It goes down. Homestead up 62-39, heading into the fourth. In the fourth, Grace Sullivan, one-man press breaker, finds Ayanna Patterson. Patterson had a game-high 27 as Homestead wins 78-42 over Dwanger. Southside 4-0 this year, including 2-0 in conference. The Archers ranked 11th in this week's 4A poll. They were at Northside, that's Jazz Combs. She had 15 points that would lead Southside. And in the third quarter, it's 40-6, ladies in green. Nevaeh Pearson with the pilfer and the pair, and now it's 50 to 13, Southside on top. Fourth quarter now, 
The legends, Zara Noker, working it down low for a pair, but simply too much from Coach Juanita Goodwell's south side team. You're going to see Lamaya Woodson, who recently signed with Youngstown State. She had 10 points in this one. Southside wins it easily, 70 to 19 archers. At Northrop, no fellas, just the ladies tonight. Kevin Clopton and his Bruins hosting Bishop Lures. We picked this one up in the third quarter. Delaney Bailey from Lures draining it from distance, but the Knights only up 25 to 16. So this one, this one was close. Tiana White for the Bruins down low gets the two. It's a 25-18 ball game. It's a seven-point lead for the Knights. Janiah Bright, who's having a nice season for Coach Mark Pixley, with the bucket here to extend the lead to nine. Northrop Serenity Bragg would sink a three. They left her open, but Lures does win this one, 53-41 at Northrop. In the ACAC, Heritage could very well be in the hunt for a conference crown this year. They were taking on Southern Wells tonight, and the Raiders looking good here. You're going to see another bucket from the Raiders. But after that, Heritage taking control. Claire Bickle for the Patriots gets the layup there, and you're going to see more Bickle, just a different Bickle. How about Ella Bickle? She would get a layup of her own, and it's Heritage. Edging Southern Wells in a good one tonight. 71-68 Patriots a winner. Final stop for Prep Hoops. West Noble with a new coach, but the same winning ways. Yeah, Jeff Burns leading a 5-2 Chargers team at Busco. Third quarter is Angela Coldwell for two as uh, West Noble leading this one 57-16. You're going to see more from West Noble here. Initially the miss, but the Chargers get the hook back. You can bet Coach liking that. It's 59-16. Busco's Kara the Bolt going to the cup here. Nobody stops her. 60 to 18. And then you're gonna see West Noble's Lily Mast. Mast with the mask. Apparently it doesn't hurt the shooting stroke. She had 24 points to lead everybody tonight as West Noble beats Busco 74 to 29. We got more highlight zone, including your gem of the night up next. Last week it was Carol's Emily Parrott with the key bucket in the double overtime win against Homestead and a filthy flush from our guy Caleb first. Those two taking home top honors, but there is a new king in town. And it's time for your gem of the night brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers. And you know what? We couldn't decide on just one because we had two slams tonight. And this one comes courtesy of Dylan Overland, the big guy from Angoma with a breakaway slam. Take another look at it. Just part of a 20 to 0 run to start the game for Angola. Dylan Overland pounding one home. And then Luke Goody. The pass is good, the dunk is good. It's just a beautiful play all around. Andrew Leeper with the finish. Goody. No look. Leeper hammers it home. And with that, we split your Peter Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Night two ways. Homestead and Angola. Congratulations to those two guys. Hey, next week, uh, a little bit of everything, right? Double header between Homestead and Lures. I can tell you that is going to be on the boys' side your game of the week. Homestead, perhaps a team to beat. They're ranked, as I mentioned, third in the state in the 4A poll and Lures, part of that triumvirate that won the SAC title last year. Naylon Thompson, only 15 points away from 1,000, might get it tomorrow as they play Canterbury. But Homestead Lure is going to be your game of the week. Next Friday night, you got Carroll at Wayne. That should be a, a low-scoring defensive battle. Leo is at Huntington North. The Lions are for real. How about boys and girls doubleheader? Prairie Heights at Churubusco. Prairie Heights off to a good, I believe, 2-0 start in NECC play. And obviously, you saw what Busco did tonight down in South Adams with Landon Jordan, Jackson Paul and company. And then those West Noble girls who got that win tonight against Busco at Central Noble. Central Noble, we know the type of success they've had the last few years on the highlight zone. And that does it for this week's show. For Colton, I'm Glenn. We'll see you next Friday night.